What's up, everyone? Project Itachi here, reminding you to check out our Patreon page, which is full of bonus content, exclusive merch, promo codes, and access to our premium podcast, GZ After Dark. Sign up for any tier and be part of the action. Check it out at patreon.com forward slash the GZ Chop Shop. Also, be sure to leave us a review wherever you listen to our podcast. And now, to the show. God. All right. Um, hey, tell me so when, yeah. you start when you record. Uh, we, we've been recording. Uh, we've been recording. Half Everything's the podcast is when are oh, we whoa, recording? Here, here, let's start it off right. Let's start it off right. All right oh, here, look. God. Wow. All right. There we go. That's the start right there. Me chucking a fucking bottle of whiskey. You need so many interventions. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. So many. I, I have a lot of. I have a lot of problems. <laughs> I don't even. There's no way I can do a normal introduction after that. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> welcome back, everybody, to this week's episode of the GZ Chop Shop. Uh, yes, if you're wondering if we missed last week, we did. I was sick and I was on bed rest, so we did not record an episode last week. We don't so allow it to touch you to work when you're sick anymore. Yeah, I, you know, I was his nurse. I came over. I gave him an enema mm, with his dick. Mm, mm, That's not right, an enema. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna bail. I got to ruin we the intro. We we don't we don't have. All right, have let's start our first topic. To run easy topic. Justice League. What do you guys think? You guys think it's gonna be good? There's a few reviews out already. There are a few reviews out. Uh, I think it's gonna be 50-50. I think is it gonna be better than the actual film release? Yeah, that's the bar is not that high. Um, There's so a bar set? I do think it'll be <laughs> exactly. There's a <laughs> the bar. bar the so bar was I, the I, bar was in the dirt. I have a question. Did they actually re-record everything? No, they or is did it just some reshoots? Some reshoots. Mm-hmm. So they all the actors that, especially Ben Affleck, who said he was done with Batman, mm-hmm. agreed to come back and do reshoots. Yeah, for this one movie. Yeah, yeah. And then the, a lot of the footage that uh, Josh Whedon dropped is just getting pretty much implemented. A lot of things are like effects wise that they didn't need all the actors to come back in because you know CG is just so freaking powerful now that a lot of the stuff was done in Tell post that to editing, Superman's right? mustache. Wait. Yeah, well, that... that he has a mustache so, well, with now? The reshoots, well, with the reshoots, there's probably some... It's going to look weird. I will admit, you're going to see the spots where the CG took over and the spots where the reshoots were, where he probably didn't have a mustache. So that might be a little, a little weird. I don't remember a mustache on Superman. No, well, that's see, because the CG yeah, covered the CG it, but it there. looked weird. But he looked like he had like a, a fucking punched up lip. Why couldn't he just yeah. shave? Because he was doing the Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible. Oh, yep, he was right. doing two movies. By contract, he could not shave it. It, it well, just actually, seems like a fake mustache would look better than a CGI no mustache. No, no. Yeah, no. on Superman. No. Can you imagine the backlash that would have been if they had let him actually just show up like, like yo, they did no CG editing? <laughs> yeah, hold up. Speaking of Superman, I, I, I agree. Justice League is going to be 50 50 because the bar is so low. Anything that comes out would probably be better. But on the topic yeah. of Superman, I want to bring up Superman and Lois, the new show on CW. Oh, is that out already? It's out already. I have Am to I... say, I, I will say this it's a great fucking show and I've said this a lot Superman and Lois when it's Superman and Lois Superman doing Superman things Lois doing fucking journalist things it's fucking amazing it's it's top tier TV then you got the fucking kids <laughs> one has like depression ADHD the other one's a normal jog like okay cool one has powers the other one kind of doesn't okay cool the, the, where's the drama there's drama alright kid your dad's Superman Quit being a bitch about it. Quit saying, oh, I'm not special because my dad's Superman. Like, no, shut the fuck up, all right? Shut, your dad did something. He stopped you from killing another kid. Shut the fuck up. Quit bitching about it. That's all I want to say to these kids is shut the fuck up. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> CW makes good shows? Yes. Flash. Like, when I... When Arrow. I, 
when, when I think of like solid entertainment, supernatural, I think of stars, HBO, like that's where I go to. I don't yeah. think of the CW. Well, no, you're, CW you're, you're, you has also great are, DC you're, shows. And you're also thinking, I mean, you're comparing premium television to free television. I, I don't have free television. What's that? Exactly. I stream everything. So for free, so for free television, the CW has pretty good standards for you know being on. I mean, their their revenue is just pretty much ads and the people tuning in that keeps them going. But, so does the CW have, have, have an app? Yeah, CWC. They have a, they have a st- streaming app. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think every I think shoot who doesn't have Everything. a streaming app right Paramount now? Paramount Plus. Paramount was, has a streaming app, and you'll. Fuck Paramount because I love Yellowstone and they have to make me pay to watch the past four seasons. Fuck out of here. You know, I when I, I, I noticed the Paramount uh, app like a couple weeks ago and the first thing I thought of is Paramount still in business. <laughs> when I think of Paramount, no. I, I think of like older movies, you know, it has like the mountain and the stars and it's like Paramount. Well, they still have a yeah, major. Still they still have movies. major titles to their name. Yeah, they still yeah. have major titles to their name. I mean, hello, Star Trek. The guy may not like Star Trek. I think the president of Paramount like doesn't like Star CBS. One of them doesn't like Star Trek. But that look when it comes to the movies, Star Trek movies, that's that's via Paramount. Sure, I Star Trek fan base probably keeps them alive alone. I just uh, I didn't realize they were still uh, in business. Yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, it's also like that article you found about cable companies. I was going to touch like, on that. Too. I mean, <laughs> you're over here like free TV. I'm over here like streaming quality shit, no commercials. I'm part of the problem. You know, we also got to admit, though, you know, we know Netflix is going to ha- implement ways to prevent people from sharing passwords. We know that's going to happen. Yeah. But if it's we a long time coming. Netflix, it's a long time coming. It's bullshit, though. Especially when you increase the prices to what is it now, eighteen dollars? It's damn near twenty dollars a month for just one subscriber. Yeah, for one subscriber, and you have you have it set to four screens at a time. Okay, look, I have multiple devices. I have my iPad, my phone, my computer, my sister's phone. Like, there's a family in here. We all pay for one Netflix. We all watch it in this think, house. Yeah, the I think most families that do that. You want us to share to buy our own separate Netflix. I, I think it's, I think what they mean is they're gonna go the Hulu way, which they'll be able to say, okay, you're in this zip code and the person you're sharing with is you know four cities away. Hulu tracks that stuff and they prevent people from sharing like that. But if you're in the same zip code or same town, then you can share multiple screens. So. The, the 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 issue I have with that is that's going to screw military people up. Hard. That's going to screw military people up really bad because if the person that's paying for it is a military member and they're out at sea and they decide they get internet and they're like, hey, I'm going to use my Netflix because they're the paying account. Netflix will be like, okay, well, you're the subscriber. You're logging in from freaking Hawaii, but your spouse is logging in from Washington State. Mm, yeah, we're gonna have to. Uh, no, sorry. Cut them Netflix. off. I completely That's agree with that. Them. I do. I completely agree with that. However, I'm not gonna pretend like when I was in the military, I couldn't afford 15, 20 bucks over going out and drinking. I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I. It's still. It's just it's like I get bullshit. it. It's like, bullshit. It's, it's, it's bullshit. I agree. It's, it's, yeah. But, I, Netflix was giving up. warnings too. the price increase when they started raising the price. I knew what they were doing. That was their warning. The, the steady price increase was to kind of force people to go to those people that might have been like piggybacking off of their Netflix because I piggyback off of, of, of uh, my friend's Netflix. Um, but in turn, they get to piggyback off of one of my other streaming services. So a lot of people probably have that arrangement. But Netflix was probably like you know with these big movies they come out they they need that revenue because they're they're not getting like small time actors they're getting big name actors in their original series and their original movies so i get that they need that revenue and the steady price increase was partly for that and also partly to try to force people to go to those people piggybacking that might 
you might let your friend borrow it one time and you forget they have it, but they're always using it. And you go to them like, hey, look, if you're going to be using this Netflix, you need to help pay for it. So it's kind of like, I think they were trying to force well, us to be the bad guy before they became the bad guy. Did you and see it Netflix work. is like spreading themselves too far with all these projects they have? Like they're investing too yes. much money into everything. Like, yo, yo chill. Yeah. But give us five great shows over 20 okay good ones. Yeah. I do think they've been spreading themselves not even just in the American market, but in the global market because, you know, there's, I'm sure there's Netflix only series in other countries that we don't even see, just like we have some that see they probably Korea. never see. I know for a fact they get a lot of shows because just from the ones we do finally get that are really good, I'm like, that's not even like half they've, the they've library. Been having them. Yeah. So uh, the price raising and the, the, the killing of the password sharing. Um, you know, it's gonna suck. Gonna win? HBO Max in HBO Max isn't doing oh, it yet. Hence, damn, they're, they're, they're not, not doing it yet, but they're gonna win. They're gonna win the long term streaming streaming game. They're putting out if they keep doing what they're movies, doing. Like Godzilla versus King Kong is gonna be like technically free if you're already paying for it instead of doing yep. the bullshit Disney route of paying an extra $30. Yep. How many more people are going to be like, well, I know my friend has it, but he's probably going to be watching at the same time, so we can't watch it. I'm going to make sure to get it myself. Yeah, and you can share passwords yeah. and accounts on a yeah. HBO Max without any issues. But that's because they're new. Yeah. They're new. Yeah. How much give was it, Netflix some... back 10 years ago? Like Less than $7. Plus. $7. And I think when they first started raising the price, it was $8. I think it was eight ninety nine mm-hmm. was the first jump. I think, mm-hmm. and I remember they, people, their backlash was insane, and they still did it, and they, <laughs> they uh, told everyone that was that already had an account that they were grandfathered in to stay at like, what was it, five ninety nine or six ninety nine? Yeah, we were you were grandfathered for like a good year, and then they've been they brought everyone up <clears throat> to the not, same price afterwards. They have not been grandfathered anybody the past several nope. years. Nope. Nope. As soon as they, they, because as soon as you log on to Netflix, it'll tell you right before it even lets you log in to whatever you want to watch. It'll be like, hey, this price is going up. And literally for the last two years back to back, they've raised the price. They usually would skip a year at least, but for the last two years, they've raised the price back to back. So I would think a price raise after their next move of the password thing would completely burn their bridges. That would just piss people off because it'll be like, okay, there's no point to raise the price any higher you're forcing everyone to get their own account raising the price any higher <laughs> completely ridiculous well there's two okay. reasons especially per month there's two reasons that <clears throat> i understand why they're doing it the first one not quite as much because they did it to themselves but the second one i don't blame them. The first is they are for the most part putting out quality content and that content's mm-hmm. probably getting more expensive so they have to cover that that mm-hmm. one's on them the second one is is on us. Them a little bit, but on us with the account sharing. I don't know if you read the article, but basically it was like 32 to 42 or so percent of people under the age of, I think, 30 share accounts. They That's share accounts. That's a huge chunk of change. That That's probably the, 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 the large, yeah, well, and their, let's, their let's major market. Let's talk about market. the whole numbers. Netflix has, what, 150 million accounts, paid accounts? What's that to their $20 uh, right now? It's a lot. That is a, that is a lot That's of money. That's a lot, that is a of, lot yeah. of money. Yeah, exactly. So let's let's say the cost of running Netflix is what? $10 million? Oh, shit, it's probably more than And that. equipment only? No, $10 million equipment only. If you're talking equipment million, only. <clears throat> yeah. Probably $10 million. $50 million in employees and whatnot. So how much money does that leave them? I don't even know. What the fuck? Hold on. Let me get, let me get that's some serious number that's some serious number crunching right there i think I, what they should do they should do the hbo max three billion approach. dollars 203 that's... million paid subscribers as of uh the end of 2020 all right what's that times 20 bucks that's still How a much big is number that? of paid subscribers about, still about five money about 520 million well plus a zero so a little over what? What so would that be? Five, five billion? Five billion, like five billion dollars. Five billion dollars. And you're telling me you're getting ripped off. 
Five, okay. So five billion. Okay, let's say two hundred million for employees wrong. and equipment. It's That's what I was just thinking. I was like, lot. okay, if you if you if you break it down, you got your production team, you got your your equipment. How much are they paying the, in movies? <clears throat> half half a billion in movies. That still leaves you. They with don't about even have to four billion. And the they don't even really mean, pay for marketing. Fuck, yeah, the fuck you mean? You're you're not making enough money. The fuck do you mean? Yo, we got to make sure people don't share accounts because they're ripping us off. Like, no, you're ripping us off. I think what really was the last straw for them was... So here's the thing. 2020 was, has been a defining year across the board for a lot of things that were not needed to be adjusted for like the last decade or so. 50 billion. 20, tw- 50, 50 so billion. yeah, in the billions. So c- the COVID lifestyle has made a lot of these companies reevaluate their approach to things and if anything a lot of people stay at home netflix wants to benefit off of those outdoorsy people who probably never pay for streaming service because you know it's like oh my husband or my wife or my friend you know has it and if i'm bored i watch it so the watch time of those netflix accounts probably was nowhere near as high as it has been for this last year so they're they have a way of tracking the activity and they know the the general activity of every subscriber and how much watch time they have from X amount of locations. So they probably saw a huge jump in watch time numbers from accounts that usually had low numbers to no activity. And someone in marketing probably did the numbers and said, well, yeah, we're making 50 billion, but we're missing out on like, probably like another 10 billion because all of these people during the COVID lifestyle are now utilizing this one account, but you've got five, you got one person, but you've got five people using this account in five different locations. It is a money loss. It is a, it is a money hit. Um, I don't want to say that they're being greedy. I mean, every, let's be honest, every business at some point gets greedy, but I, I, I see from Netflix's point. Yeah. Uh, but from Netflix's standpoint, uh, I do get it uh, because people have gotten, I agree with Warners, we kind of did it to ourselves mostly because instead of people limiting how many times they gave out their password, uh, and sometimes people don't even know it. You might give the password to one person and you only meant to give it to that one person and that person's like, oh, yeah, I, I got my buddy's broken I got up, my buddy's Netflix. Like the broken couples, like couples that had a Netflix account together break up and now there's two two families basically using the same account They're using the same account which i'm kind of in that category because i still have <laughs> my friend we, we broke up but i still get to use the netflix hey oh, yeah. they still get what, to use what, my crunchy what happens role. when they cancel your netflix it'd be like all right you know what netflix says you got to pay i guess i just won't be having netflix that's why i have hbo <laughs> like it I'm wouldn't bother you, me hbo's coming up Dude, just do do what I do, man. You you binge watch one for a month and then switch over to another one. Yeah, I mean, like I get it. Like I'm was I'm waiting for it to pop up. Like I was sitting there, I logged on to Netflix today, and I was like, all right, if it pops up, it you know it, it pops up. Uh, but I think they're also basing it on like the the amount of devices. I don't think, in the regards of my ex, I don't think she gave her password to that many people because I was with her when she like signed up for the Netflix and I never gave the password. She never gave the password. And I also think what is getting people caught is the fact that you you don't want to log out and log in too many times. A lot of people, because the cell phones are attached to them, they might not be in front of their TV, but they want to watch a Netflix show. They log out of the one that's on the TV because you can only be logged in at a certain amount of certain times. Uh, and then they log in on a new device because they know the password that could flag you as well because now you're hopping devices so i will say this so, hulu as strict as they are with zip codes no matter where i log on to hulu from it's never once uh it's like giving me a warning or anything i think cell phones work a little differently and get more leeway yeah so i would just say everyone who's password sharing or anyone you ever if you don't want people knowing your password change your password if you don't remember how many people you gave it to change it right now or start calling up your friends and be like yo hey contribute something i don't know move to my zip code whatever (laughs) but but yeah that's coming 
Uh, we can't say we didn't really see it coming. We we kind of knew something yeah. was going to come up. Um, that's like been years in the works. And if you don't want to pay for for Netflix, HBO Max. I mean, then you you get to see a lot of new movies. I like just for paying well, for Cartoon yeah. Network on it too. I like Hell to, yeah. I like to. Compare, I've been binge watching uh, Eddie and Eddie, just feeling like a little kid again. Hulu Hell to, yeah. To, to, to YouTube, both of them have a very uh, strict um, algorithm that they stick to, a, a plan, and they don't they don't divert. Hulu's been the way it is since day one. It's always been strict on zip codes. It's always had you know multiple screens, different prices, but they also go a different route with the live TV thing too. Mm-hmm. And who's to say Netflix won't may, potentially go down that route? At some point as well, especially as we see cable companies continuing to go down. Dwindle. Yeah. Um, I will say this in regards to Hulu. I have a Hulu, but Hulu is a little bit slicker about how they're doing things. Like Netflix, <laughs> yeah, I will are. give kudos to Netflix or just being upfront, like, yo, we're gonna raise the fucking price. Here's what it is. And that's it. That that's the end. You pay that price, you get access to everything. Hulu's kind of like, yeah, for eight bucks, we'll give you ad free. Oh, but you want to watch this movie? Yeah, you got to sign up for that Showtime Premium. But I paid you. So what did I sign up for? It's like, oh, well, you signed up for the ad free from this regular stuff, but that premium stuff though. But what? The same as Amazon so, oh, Prime though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do. Well, come on. Let, let's be honest. It's well, Amazon. Are Hulu's, we really surprised by that? Hulu's no. big thing is, I think the numbers have changed a little bit, but I, I think it goes all the way up to like 79 with tax for the full package. But even at like 50 bucks with just regular Hulu Live, no ads, I think that's about what it mm-hmm. is. Maybe a little more. Um, you get more channels at a cheaper price than you do when you watch basic cable and you have to choose all the different packages, but each package has only one channel you like, so then you end up paying hundred, like hundred, two hundred dollars just to have a little bit of everything that you like. You see what I'm saying? Oh yeah. Hulu yeah, just kind of gives basically, you everything. For the most yeah, part. Hulu is basically what cable television uh should have been. And a um, ton of free ESPN dude, like if you have Hulu Live, no commercials, you can watch as many, pretty much as many sports as you want. Yo, do you guys think like people will be okay with watching with ads if ads were about a quick five TikToks long, like five ads, yeah. one one TikTok? One, Hulu's like, ads aren't bad. It's like three thirty-second ads every yeah, but that's, like fifteen again, that's minutes. That's a minute or and a half. That, that's three still ads shorter only. than basic. It's still a lot yeah, shorter I, than basic TV. But look, if if you could put it down to like. Like You're part you of the problem. five TikToks in about thirty seconds. You could you can easily sell me a product in five seconds. I will say this. Here's the problem with ads. Uh they, they do not they well, I won't say they shouldn't exist because the companies that exist. advertise this <laughs> well, the companies that are That's paying how they to have their, their stuff advertised fund the overall yeah they fund the Who overall the company so that we can have bounty access commercial to it. and be like look at their dish and be like you know what i could go for some bounty you no know they get you when you're at the store to... they get you when you're at the store and you see bounty and you're like you just think without that's true realizing it's a, it's a, sub, that's it's a better, subconscious thing yeah that's the better yeah. i'm not that subconscious because i look at bounty i see the price. five bucks for one roll get the fuck out of here now <laughs> Throw that, I, I, throw that 10, shit across of, the aisle. Get the fuck out of here. But out of 10 people, out of 10 people, you're probably one two of the three that right, might think that. that word. <laughs> yeah. You're like one two of the three that might see that. And that's all they need. That's all they need. And then it just multiplies because then those people go and say, oh, you get, girl, I got bounty. Go get yourself some bounty. It'll pick that. Girl, and then it just keeps what? going and going I and going and going and going. Those are basic. Rags, and I can wash it myself. Thing. They last you forever. <laughs> Those are basic. <laughs> if you're having a conversation to your friends about bounty, that is a basic middle aged white person family conversation. Yup. <laughs> and that's Yo, exactly who they're selling to. Hey, Taji, hey, Taji, me and you kind of grew up the same and a little bit poor. Have you ever gone to like a fast food chain and stolen like <laughs> half the napkins from them because you didn't want to pay? Absolutely. Napkins? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Why? Why? Yeah, you know how? 
Look, this supply adapt is we got got last us the whole damn month. <laughs> what you mean? Hey man, yeah, what you see, mean? When I was a kid, we used uh, a lot of just reusable like kitchen towels. It's cheaper, man. You don't have to buy as many. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Things. Yeah, you're right. But again, we're at McDonald's. I pay twenty bucks if for I make a McDonald's meal. I might as well just mm-hmm. take half the napkins. Fuck you. And ketchup packs too. Ketchup I feel like packs, ketchup packs, yeah. and they they throw like three yeah. in. And I'm looking at them like, bruh. And they keep keep throwing them in there. Yep, yeah. keep it coming, I'm keep thinking, it coming. I'm this is the supply of ketchup in the house. See, they got smart now, on it though with the sweet and sour sauce. They charge you like a quarter per sweet and sour now. Yeah. See yeah. how it's coming back around? Now they got us talking about the paper towels. Now we're selling to someone else. That, that no, Proy no, has been. No one's gonna to listen to this, and we're not even getting revenue for talking about bad even... from McDonald's. We're selling, stealing we're napkins selling from McDonald's, McDonald's right now. We're selling bounty paper towels, yo. yo McDonald's bounty, y'all better sponsor us. Yo, hey, <laughs> anybody want a good sponsorship? I'll stop talking shit right now for five grand a month. Yeah, that's a solid deal. That's a, that's I a, think, that's a solid uh, deal. Didn't Dr. Sponsor Disrespect... us to keep Yuli from talking trash about your business. <laughs> I think Dr. Disrespect attempted that route. Twitch, pay me more and I'll stop trashing you. Nope. Yeah. Get out of here. Nope. <laughs> nope. Well, he's doing better on YouTube now. Hey. Yeah, he's killing I it. I always respect anyone who stands by their values and doesn't cave in to uh, mm-hmm. selling out. No, oh, but don't, uh, don't, yeah. don't look at me. But for does that. he I'll use sell out if you Bounty? Yo, hey, if Bounty actually, if Bounty sends a touchy an email saying, "Hey, we want Yuli to stop talking shit about us. Here's five grand for the next four months, every that's, month." That's I'll be not like, how it "You works. know what, Bounty, the quicker picker upper. God damn, it's good." They they just sue you. They don't bargain with you. For what? I was gonna say, being honest well, about their brand. It, it it could depend. It could really depend. They will sue you if uh you're pretty much a nobody and they just want to run you in the ground. If you're a somebody and you have influence, like we find out that this show had more influence than we thought and it reaches thousands and thousands and thousands of people, they probably would come along and be like, look, <laughs> we know you don't like our paper absorption. Let's make a deal. I hope they, <laughs> because I you hope, reach thousands of people. <laughs> I hope we're sitting in the room and they use the phrase paper absorption. <laughs> paper <laughs> absorption. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I want it. I will not sign anything unless they say the phrase "paper you know, absorption." <laughs> we're there. We're there in the meeting. I'm I'm, I'm muzzled up because you guys don't trust me talking. I'm just there like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Warner, no, so like, mu- That's a newsletter. They, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'd be wondering about these newsletters, and you'd be signing a very specific personal contract of what you can and cannot say. Oh man, <laughs> Yuli's contract alone would be like thirty pages, pages, pages long. It'd be about he, like he, right he'd here. Pretty much have to be quiet. Right yep. Right here. Yep. Right here. All these nah, pages. That's, that's not <laughs> enough. Nah. Add two more to that. No. Add two more. Part one. Yours would be like a prenup. <laughs> <That's> part one. <laughs> have you ever seen that "How You Met Your Mother" episode where Barney has to sign a prenup, or he's having his mm-hmm. girl oh, yeah, sign a prenup, girl. and it's it's like this big? That'd be you. Mm-hmm. He's signing a that you. It'd be like a prenup with you. It's like every oh, episode, like every time you, you cuss, was... you have to. You don't get paid or something. <laughs> you would just be staring at the camera ninety percent of the episode. <laughs> you know, a- after the recordings, you'd just be hearing like "fuck, fuck, fuck." I don't fuck, think fuck this shit. Fuck. I don't think he'd uh, be on the show anymore. He he would just be doing the uh, like the audio <laughs> and technical support. He would be behind the scenes, just making sure That'd the show. Guys, is Jamie. It, it would be us turning around sometimes, like, "Hey, Yui, can you bleep that out?" All right, thanks. Can you can you bleep that out? <laughs> yeah, what was it, Doctor Disrespect? Yeah, when with his Yui, like, green screen and stuff fail. Fix the lights, Yui. Thank you. All you production. see is a water ball just <laughs> fly at you. Production, Yui's production. We just start yelling, "Production, production, <laughs> production!" You, you hear a distant. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's just a, it's a, fuck you <laughs> hey guys that's production back there he uh yeah <laughs> if you remember that that sound you know who that is <laughs> but uh we really have yeah. to be better about that first minute of the show not cussing that is a rule on youtube that is a rule yeah it's something like the first yeah it's like the whole minute right i would love yeah, to see whole... us do a full first five minutes well i guess Healy wouldn't be able to talk no, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, 
he would have to literally mute himself just so he doesn't accidentally forget and then he'd have to remember to unmute himself so we can he actually hear him he, after he, he could do a minute because it would just be the intro and then kind of go from up. there it'd be a minute of this Fuck, 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 I'm predicting uh, <laughs> podcasts being ex accessible through streaming services in the near future. That mean? would be amazing. Like, like a, like a, how we kind of sometimes do the podcast on Twitch, but instead of having to use uh, twat, I mean, Twitch. Um, twat. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a. <laughs> he you meant like that. that little slight. You like that little <laughs> slight. <laughs> He meant to say that, huh? <laughs> you can say yeah, that the first, using... the first minute. <laughs> but yeah, instead of using them, uh, you could be like on Hulu to watch your favorite podcast, which I think would be amazing for podcasters because streaming is so accessible and everyone likes to stream. And there's people who just turn on shows in the background. Uh, a lot of people have found podcasting success via YouTube just because people just turn it on in the background. So making it more accessible on the favorite platforms like Hulu, Netflix, hell, HBO for the more raunchy ones like ours. <laughs> it would be easy. It would be, I think that would be a very powerful asset for, for podcasts in the future. We're considered you know, raunchy. I'm pretty positive. Uh, you can go to Netflix with pretty much anything and they'll be like, deal. <laughs> I want to ask for a special. We should ask for a special. They'll probably say what yes. They say yes to be? everything. What, what, what huh? say yes. This. I mean, yeah. No reason to change. Gamma games in 3D. What? The Gamma games. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody wants. Yuli's hand reaching out the screen towards them, trying to cop a feel. Wow. Come here, little. Well, <laughs> while calling them Jewish because they're uh. <laughs> Because they're foreign, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but raised, oh, no. born and raised in New Jersey. <clears throat> oh my gosh! Yeah. So yeah, but no, that that would be a thing. You just pitch the idea to to Netflix, and we make it the Gamma Games documentary, and how we started and where we are now. That'd be the most interesting i'll say <laughs> documentary <laughs> if uh Definitely tiger king if tiger king can make it we can do it tiger king didn't make yeah, it the yeah. motherfucker's still in prison making money <sighs> yeah yeah he ain't yeah. doing shit with that money in prison <laughs> he's only in prison for yeah. a little bit i would say that i wouldn't say that no, he, he might be living he's the gonna life be out he's gonna <clears> be out when he's like what 75 80 <laughs> He might want to stay in there. He might uh he might yeah. be living a life. Cause think about it. If you are making money hey. in prison, right? Hey. As, as he stomach, probably is. I'll offer you meth. All you gotta do is suck my dick and take it every now and then. I don't think that's how prison works. <laughs> I like how orders <laughs> immediately just came. I don't I don't think that's how prison I, works. I don't care how rich you are. I don't think that's how prison works, man. You know, there's someone in there sure. willing to take that deal. I'm pretty sure he's probably got like a one cellmate of his choosing that he gets along with probably has a TV because you got to think about it doesn't have to work gets three square meals a day visitation doesn't have to worry about probably like taxes or anything else so I mean he's probably comfortable right now you know what came to my I mind know when you said that have you seen that episode of Titans when uh they have to go to that facility and the ones in there that are being haven doing what they're told get like a tv mm -hmm. and then like, oh. a sandwich <laughs> yep exactly yeah it's like literally your life is get up do what you're told which w really is what i think the most work they yeah and they don't even do hat they do nowhere near the amount of work that we do in the military they they get up they get recreation 
I think they, they have their laundry duty. Ooh, they probably have to clean the grounds. Ooh. That sounds like the Navy. <laughs> but that's about it. Then they go back to their cells. And I don't know. Whatever happens like after a, the lights go out. It's like a 10 year or so timeout. Only when you get out, you can't get a job. Mm -mm. Yeah, I was talking with my mom about like how veterans are just like you you spend so much time serving the country and then the country will just you know you come out and they're like thanks for your service um bye yep like they just don't give two shits Why about you that? afterwards dude i i can tell you right now i never when i first that. got out i remember hearing all these commercials about if you're a veteran come on down to this mm -hmm. you know whatever and uh sign up for jobs uh what is that job mm -hmm. uh help me out here job job uh, I I know what you're talking about. Whatever. Crap. So uh, they're like job fairs and crap. Yeah, and job fairs, stuff. and you know they're promoting like veterans. But I remember going out there to those when I was looking for a job when I first got out, like a good job, better mm -hmm. than just working at the gym. And I remember not a single person called me back. No one cared that I was a veteran, and not not like I was no. expecting. I'm a veteran. I'm a superstar. Give me a job. Yeah. But why? But don't promote those things to me put it in my head and then when i show up i get nothing yeah and then even and and i can speak firsthand on this that even as a veteran landing a job when i was working at the post office i was so abused I, it was so bad a blind person could have seen it it was so bad that uh was it because, because you were when you work at the post office pretty much because i was a veteran because they they automatically feel yep. like you know veterans we were in the military we do what we told we don't complain we shut up and do it no matter how shitty the job is yep i, I experienced that's, that at a warehouse yeah and that's how the post office did me because uh ccas were supposed to alternate routes of delivering mail which means as a cca you should never have the same route back to back because your whole purpose is to learn every route. So when you become a regular and you get your own designated day-to-day -day route, you know it. So we're all supposed to alternate routes. All the CCAs around me that were civilians, I was the, as far as I knew, I was the only military veteran CCA there. They alternated routes all the time among themselves, except me. I had route 47, I'll never forget it because I had it every fucking day. It was the longest route in the post. It was so bad nobody wanted to take the route the person who had the route it broke them so much they were retiring it was that long and that harsh of a route and they wanted me to do it in the same amount of time as everyone else who had been there for years doing routes that were far shorter than mine they broke my route up by one like block and it was the driving portion where the person didn't even have to get out of the van to deliver the mail so they took the easiest part of the route away from me and left me the <laughs> hardest parts of the route <laughs> Oh and we're like, God. all right, be done with this by four o'clock. I came home. It was so bad one day. I didn't finish the route until like 8 p.m. I was like, no, I'm going to get my overtime. I came back and I was like, can I rotate routes? So they rotated me two times to keep me happy. And then they put me right back on the route again. When I finally quit and I came in and I was turning the paperwork and they were like, yeah, uh, I asked the girl that was still working there. I was like, so what did they do with the route when I got transferred down to the walk-in station after I accidentally hit the lady with the, the mail truck? But that's a story for another time. Was yeah. it an accident yeah, or was it on purpose? It was an accident. No, it was an well, accident. Fuck that it was lady like a blind anyway. spot. <laughs> and actually, you know what? Looking back, though, it was a weird saving grace because I was, I was so depressed and physically hurting that you know when you're you're doing a job you just hate that you literally just zone out like you don't even know what's going on around you you're just doing your job and, and you're just doing the motions i had gotten to that point like i was literally hating life because <clears throat> you couldn't take time off you only could get a tuesday wednesday or thursday off no weekends only the ccas were, worked on sunday to deliver amazon first time i said fuck everybody who ordered via amazon <laughs> Because only the CCAs delivered the packages and Jesus. half the shit people ordered was fucking ridiculously huge. Uh, but yeah, anyway, when I quit and I asked the girl, I said, so what did they do with Route 47 once I got transferred? I'm thinking she's going to say, oh, they gave it to another guy. No, they fucking split the route up among all the CCAs. <laughs> I was like, are you serious? They so when the whole time earlier? I was gone, they, you, they couldn't have done that before? 
we couldn't have just split the root up and added it to each of our regular roots he was like yeah they just split it up when you left and i was like oh so after that accident with the lady that i it was literally like a bumper bump but they they were like my boss at the time was like yeah we were just about to get you back i was like oh hell then i'm glad i got the fuck out of here because as soon as i came back they would have gave me that whole route again i mean it was so bad when i would come home my mom was like i was withering away she noticed it. she was like you were literally withering away every day you would come in you were just literally withering away when you had that route they just they a lot of places they I don't know why they don't want to hire veterans, but if they, they do get their hands on veterans, they just see this expendable, I don't know, resource. Because they're it, like, oh, we can give you the shittiest job and you'll just take it. It goes both ways, too. When I when I was in nursing school for three years, I was working at a Walmart warehouse. And they, they did that to me. I mean, I didn't have to go anywhere, but they expected more out of me and I had to do more. Mm -hmm. with the same expectations as people who didn't have to do more. And I just sucked it up. And I worked yep. Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays. And then I went to nursing school the rest of the week. But I was also in the reserves at the time. So mm. the reserves didn't want to hear it about work or nursing school. Nursing school could care less what I'm doing. I either pass or I don't. The warehouse didn't want to give me the time to go to nursing school so i'd have to take off on mondays when i had clinicals and clinicals was like having a second job but you didn't get paid so i ultimately got fired from walmart after almost three years i was like eight months from graduating and they fired me because they wouldn't work with me with school i was like i'll switch a day anything like that because they were working with me for a little bit and then they stopped mm -hmm. so like nobody wanted to do anything and be helpful i also had a family at this time I was married and had two kids. So after all that, I, I finally got out of the reserves. I let the job, like they fired me. I was like, whatever. I got the GI bill for a few more months and I filed for unemployment just to get me through till I graduate. And I got a job pretty quick. After all of that, I graduate, I get a job and then I come home. My wife is gone. And I got to <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> After that, I was like, dude, I have never in my life, like since then, worked as hard as I did. Like, I'll, I'll do what I need to do. I go to work and like, mm -hmm. I'm working on school a little bit. But all of that, doing all that, after after all that happened, I was like, why? <laughs> why put in yeah. that much effort when that's nobody gives get. a shit about the other things you're doing? Mm hmm. And I wonder how many veterans go through what you went through because that's not the first time I heard of a veteran coming home and their significant others just gone. And they're like doing all these things, you know, they're 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 you know trying to keep their keep the life together and then they just come home and you know that 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 just happens. That's why I'm like I don't know what the mentality is, you know, and as we as you were talking it made me think about like some of the videos I used to see on the internet of like <clears throat> typically like college students uh they would get so mad when they would hear someone ask about like a military discount uh and they would go off and be like well what makes you feel like you deserve a military di what is that different and it's Hold like the fuck up and, and, and i used to see so many videos like that and it made me think like you got to realize okay you know what it's 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 and it's these people that you wind up either working for or with that probably are the reason our lives become such a hell because for some reason there's just so much they want here's the thing it's a catch-22 they want a military as much as they say you know they're like oh i don't want to be the a lot of people are just scared of the physical and mental demand it would have on them so they you know they find some politically correct or smart way to make it sound like they're making a more uh educated choice you know to go around it and then when you know they see veterans come out that I, I i guess there's like some i don't know some secret hostility that that stems from it i don't know i've never understood it uh and why we wind up at the end of the day getting treated like shit uh it's it's mind boggling. It's mind because everybody, here's a, another fun fact. Everybody loves you when you're in because for a lot of people, they see cha-ching. 
That's they true. see dollar signs. They see dollar signs on your head. And then once you're out, it's like nobody wants anything to do with you. It's like, oh, well, you're out. Oh, well, you're I no longer you're no you. longer financially useful. I mean, people don't people who haven't served. First of all, going to school in the military to prep for getting out is extremely difficult. I tried. Super, super and difficult. I was only taking two classes, and you, unless you just don't sleep, uh, which you you got to sleep, like that's impossible. Like just, or you're higher rank, so you don't have as much like like little jobs to do all day, and you have a little extra time in your office or whatever. It's too difficult. So people don't realize that when you decide to get out and you know maybe you want to go to school and use that GI bill and stuff it's not instant they literally drop you off you own mm-hmm. pretty much nothing yep you probably have to stay with a family member for a little bit um and these are these are like the typical people that don't have a family to come home to like you know they're single mm-hmm. or whatever but it takes time like they literally drop you and then it's like a shock factor they don't prep you for you've been in the military for years suddenly you're a civilian they're supposed to give you a class on transition but they don't and yeah you come home you got you got some money saved up sure you could probably get yourself a car or something if you don't already have one but you have no direction you just know i want to do this but that takes time that takes several months yeah. to be able to go to like get to a school go to school get yourself situated maybe find a little part-time job somewhere to balance out that gi bill but people have this thought that when you get out you're gonna just land a job you're gonna do well but that's just not true that's not true not for not for most people like uh i feel that they make the comparison to to people who might like have landed like high security like tech jobs in the military which isn't that big of a number as people may think like they might be able to come you know roll out and roll into you know a, a another job in that field and even then the percentage that successfully do that happily uh is still low so it's funny you say that because i i personally uh knew somebody that was uh air traffic control they worked in air traffic control they got out no degree they landed a job at an airport and then later at a train station and they were making well over a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars but and then and then not, yeah it can it can, it can happen can but not yeah not everyone can and there's a whole bunch of other factors that that play into it that you know i don't we're not going to get into on the show because uh that's a conversation for another time but but yeah um common misconception at you know that that veterans are some kind of super superhuman entities uh and but yeah we, we pretty much do get kicked to the curb um, once again, now there are more resources as time has gone by because it's become such a big thing that it's literally impossible to ignore nowadays. So there are, you know, they're, they're working on, they, they have resources out there. Uh, but even with those volunteer resources, there's only but so much that they can do because it really just comes down to like, look, you can apply to a thousand jobs, but if those, none of those thousand jobs hire you for whatever reason, you know, what, what can you do? Like, where do you go? What do you do from there? There's there's only but so much you can do. And they're like, oh, you know, you keep going out there. Eventually, eventually something will something will give. And I'm like, that's part of the reason why I decided to do this endeavor. Because after the post office, I was like, I'm done working for other people. Uh, I'm done giving my all for nothing. <laughs> and now my biggest critic is myself. And I prefer it that way. It may not be glamorous yet, but I'm, I'm definitely happier um that's more important one, that's way yeah. more important i'm definitely i'm definitely happier and and then that's one thing i would like i would stress to anyone is i i have a strong belief that if you do not wake up and love your job i mean literally you look forward to going to work just as much as you look forward to going home then you probably should take a moment to reevaluate a lot of people <clears throat> they enjoy the creature comforts and they put a price tag on i i want to say and i want it to be taken out of context like you know every the living comes with a price tag obviously you know nothing is free but they they feel to be considered successful in the eyes of their peers they have to have this high stress high paying job it just kind of becomes a pissing competition on well how much more stress than you am i (laughs) 
And it's like, yeah, but are you happy? When you are retired and you're looking back, was it worth missing out on a lot of things that you wanted to do or could have done? Was it worth it? What <clears throat> what are you leaving behind? What is your what is your legacy? I'm like, that's probably why like so much of the older generation are so grouchy and angry because they weren't doing jobs that they they wanted to do. They were just doing jobs that they felt they had to do. And for the most part, that was the case, you know, back then that the, the options were a lot harder. You couldn't just go out and do every job you wanted to do, but you you, you had a family to, to supply and, and, and take care of. But now the, the times have changed. We're supposed to be in better times. Um, I would I still I think if everyone went and found jobs that actually made them happy, things would be a lot different. Then no be I know this is like a, a no well, I don't know. There's some people. There's some people who genuinely yeah, love being greeters. <laughs> ten people. <laughs> You're right. It's like the ten people on earth that genuine. But yeah, in the warehouses and stuff. Here's another thing. All the people that run these big companies from the the comfort of their home. I think if like there was a way to make them work in their own work conditions for like a week. A lot of things would change. I know that's impossible, and that's a super yeah. pipe dream. Have, have you seen that episode <laughs> of South Park when everyone Amazon warehouse comes to town and they all work there, and then it like yeah. destroys everybody? It that's destroys one of my favorite everything. episodes. There's that guy like in a someone has an accident at work and it kills them, and then they just have a day where they're like, "Oh yeah," uh, and they basically blow it off like it was his fault, and never yeah. goes back to mm-hmm. work. <laughs> yeah, and they all right, I'll go back to work now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that, that you know what I actually have to like the job thing. Like, it also comes to like the people you work with. Because I would say, hands down, I I love working in the kitchen, but I didn't love the kitchen as much as I love the people I worked with. Mm-hmm. I didn't wake up yeah. every day like going, I'm happy to cook. Like, yeah, I was happy to cook. I was glad to do it, but I was happier that I'm doing it with people I considered best friends. I was yeah, happy that I, I go into work, I bust my ass with people that I can laugh with. You, you could give a, you give us a kitchen, people that like each other. It, it could be packed to the brim, but you'll hear the back like people talking shit and having a good time, busting that work. Yeah, it's the people yeah, around you. Too. If you're in a job where you hate everybody in there, and I've been in a couple of those places, I got the fuck out. I didn't stay longer than three months. Like I already know, I hate everybody here. I can't get along with anybody. I'm out. I'm Not still stuck on the fact that Yuli actually said that he was able to work with people that he liked. I thought Yuli didn't like anybody. <laughs> I'm working with you guns, aren't I? <laughs> I figured I figured if you were a human being, Yuli was already done with you. <laughs> that was they're, they're, it. You're like, done. Legit, you know what's worth you know what's funny? Like the the best people I worked with were either military or convicts. Because they know, didn't give a shit about it, drama. <laughs> they just wanted to get the work done and joke about it. That's it. Like, we, all, fuck, we I always don't care joke what your about girlfriend the, did. I just want to. I just want to cook this food and I, talk I, shit. I just want to cook this food and get done. It's funny that he he says the like military convicts, and it's so funny because we used to always joke about ships just being floating prisons. <laughs> you know what's interesting is is there's actually been a lot of us uh, uh, psychiatric and uh, psychology studies on um the mindsets the similar mindsets in in slightly different ways but the similar mindsets of prisoners and the military i mean because i know some prisoners that that they come out and they have military like discipline that they didn't have when they went in you know whatever they got locked up for it's it's kind of creepy but it's like damn there's really something to that and it makes you wonder it really makes you wonder sometimes so it was a floating prison. It was. It, <laughs> I I didn't really? fit. I didn't fit in my rack, man. They put me on the middle rack for so long, and if I turned on my side, I'm a side sleeper. If I turned on my side, I, mean, I got stuck. I mean, think about it. We they wear a uniform. We wear a uniform. They stack beds. We stack beds. <laughs> <laughs> like like except the, for the, the whole boot thing. The whole boot camp thing, where if you folded a piece of underwear wrong, you got yelled at in front of. 30 other people um, are you blind yeah, you, to... you ray charles looking <laughs> motherfucker i only say that because that's what i specifically remember uh an rdc saying in boot camp he told someone <laughs> are you blind you ray charles ass motherfucker i'll never forget that 
my i always tell my mom about the first time i got that first day when i got off the plane and they had a stand on the line except the thing is the line was fucking invisible they were like get on the line and everyone's looking at the ground what like line? looking for like this drawn line <laughs> and it was like what line and you're like that line right the fuck there get on the fuck and we're like so I just stood like on the edge of a tile with my toes right at the, and I, I guess I created the line. He was like, that line right there. And everyone was just like, what the fuck? Leave it up to Itachi to, to think logically. And then it turns out all right. It turned out all right. I was like, I'm just going to put my toes right on this tile right here. Some of the he was funniest, like, that one. <laughs> some of the funniest things I've ever heard in my life were in basic training. Oh, like at yeah. the time it wasn't funny. You're like, oh shit. But like yeah, looking back, life. I'm like, dude, that was where do they do they have a class where they just sit around and learn how to roast people? Bro. The the, the traumatic face when they make you pack up your civilian clothes in a brown box. You don't even get to fold them, you just toss them in the box. You write your address and they just ship it back home to your family <laughs> like <laughs> like Ooh. we 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 got this motherfucker. Now nah, he ain't fuck? going home. Yeah, the clothes you come in, you you do not keep. Them things get uh, shipped home that same day in a big ass brown box that your family opens and it's just your clothes. <laughs> no you, I, just imagine, your clothes. Imagine your mom getting Dude. that box like, oh my god, my son's dead. Yeah, I'm like the way they said it, just no message, no nothing. All your clothes, sneakers, underwear, everything. You don't even keep you don't keep your boxers or none of that. Wait, wait, you they give you line, box. Wait, hold up, hold up. They give you boxers and they take them back. I wish it was boxers. It was wasn't it? The, did you have the tidy whities? I think we did. had the tidy. We had the tidy whities. Did the women now, get the, tidy whities? That's a very good question. That is a very good question. <laughs> what did they? I, that is a very good question. Because we Yo. sure as hell got the tidy whities. This is grandpa that, underwear. There's a, a a thing that a friend of mine was telling me about that they're gonna train men and women exactly the same. I they're gonna don't do see what now? With that. They're, they're gonna train they're gonna... men and women exactly the same in the sense where if someone can't hold like I forgot how it was but from from what he said from what he told me it's like all the standards that a man has the women have to do and I, I apparently like, there's I... different standards for men and women yeah, yeah but uh, for the PRT that's a great here. that's a great line because you know biologically we are different um that I is think, true because I, I, I think sit-ups wise jobs, we suck <laughs> for, for specific jobs I think that needs to be the case but ultimately when it comes to the military I feel like the military should just make the decisions that they feel they need to make and it's nobody else's opinion that matters especially the public uh, because mm -hmm. the military is a totally different situation that most people do not understand and I Feel like unless you've served in the military and understand what goes into it your opinion shouldn't matter a, a, a civilian Preach. backlash <laughs> civilian backlash should not affect military standards at all and even well, though i'm a veteran, that the reason they did it though? i was a veteran you know 11 years ago so even my opinion holds a little weight isn't though that they the should. reason they did it was because of civilian backlash for some fucking reason Civilian backlash Probably. has had more say in the past, uh, you know, ten years or so. Oh, um, Gen Z on, on a lot of yeah, on a lot of different <laughs> subjects. But that's that's a topic. That's a rabbit hole right there. That, that yeah, that's 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 a, that's a deep rabbit hole. That's a that's a Gen Z rabbit hole. I don't oh, even think my man. opinion oh, should Gen matter. Z I'm not in the military hole. anymore. It's been a while. My opinion shouldn't even matter. Yeah, I think like once once you leave, once you've left it behind you know you can't really fuss about how it's handled you can fuss about it like while you were in there and you can fuss like oh now they want to make it better now that i'm gone you know but uh well, as expert actually had an input the right now yeah but Man, that's you know once sucks. you left and they made that shit easier <laughs> <laughs> man you must feel yeah. so better um, you still feel better. I look at it. <laughs> it really. I mean, just literally to say the line, the best description of grinding my gears was just watching that shit happen afterwards, and I'm like, "Are you, are you, 
You, you should you should test <laughs> it. Go back and see if they give you the same full route. Well, I can't <laughs> because I'm collecting because I'm collecting disability. I don't think I would want to, uh, because that would be the time that they change shit again. <laughs> Every time they changed it for the worse, it was with my group, like the year that I got in. And then, you know, from there and I'm like, and then as I was deciding to get out, then they were like, oh, we're going to make things easier. We're going to make things better. We're so much more open minded. We care about your your mental stability. I'm like. You now you care <laughs> <laughs> now you can never cared about mental stability. I good grief. How many people uh, are going to like waking up in the morning knowing they have an eight hour shift at Walmart just thinking, God, I hope I get fucking hit by a truck on the way to work. I don't think I don't think I hope I get hit by a car. <laughs> I think if I get hit by a car, I don't mind. If it doesn't happen, that's cool. But if I got hit, by, actually, funny story. Two months ago, I was I don't think I've told you guys this. About two months ago, I was running, and uh, the area run? I was running in, yeah, yeah, and uh, I I try to run the I used to run the wounded half the wounded warrior half marathon every year, but the past couple years I haven't been able to. Um, but yeah, I was running through, like crossing the street jogging, and someone ran a red light and hit me with their car. Physically, Did you get money out of them. Damn, they drove away. <laughs> Oh, and it, oh my god! And it was it was oh, in a part of no. it was in a part of town like it was like the ghetto like there were no cameras or anything so there was I, there was nothing I could do I got hit I I couldn't tell you the, the the car the make the model the color I got hit by a car and it was one of those things like you know look both ways yeah but it was like the middle yeah. of the day someone came out of nowhere ran a red light. Uh, luckily, the, I guess they weren't going that fast because it only tore my left ACL a little bit. Um, I got a TBI, uh, a minor brain injury, basically, uh, which is kind of resolving. And I got a concussion at the time that still bothers me now. Like I have, I still have problems with like short-term memory and stuff. For a little while after that, I was like at work and I'd have to go sit in the bathroom because I knew I was about to like black out for like ten seconds. Uh, I still get nosebleeds sometimes. And uh, yeah, speaking of getting hit by a car, I did. <laughs> Fun fact. Wow. Wow. Well, there you have it. Uh, you heard it here. Warner's got uh, hit by a car. So if you were the person and you remember this story, you need to call him and please apologize. <laughs> I walked Damn back right. to my house. Apologize. There was no help. Like, apologize. I just got up and I was like, all right, this is stupid. And I, I remember laughing. I was like stress laughing about it as I was walking back. Yeah. I got my Jeep and took myself to the hospital. Good Damn. grief. Oh, man, you got to love our society. He just drove so... away. That's the funniest <laughs> part. I like, I like how he says it. He just, just drove, drove away. away. I remember watching him. I was like dazed as shit. And I'm like, he's leaving? <laughs> I mean that's what that's the? worse than hitting another person's car. You literally you physically hit the person and drive away. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. I just remembered a video my, my fucking uncle showed me of like a, a bunch of people beat up this one dude, ran him over with a car, and as they try to drive off, the fucker's still under the car. They're just dragging it oh, for a while. No. I'm like, no. <laughs> oh, that's oh, messed up. No. This shit was so That's funny. on YouTube? No, it was on Facebook. Oh my! That's God. even worse. That's a... I'm sorry. How's that? Hold up. That's not funny. That that shit was funny to me. I'm my like, story was bro. funny because it's funny to me, so it's okay to laugh about it. That guy probably. That guy. That guy's yeah. dead. Who, who who gives a shit? That guy's dead. But the thing is, like, you got beat up and they ran you over, and instead, God was like, "Nah, you need to suffer some more. Let's let's get you to be dragged for a couple blocks." Well, I stop at roads now where the sidewalk ends. If I don't need to walk, I don't. I get in my truck. Usually people rethink trying to hit me. I haven't ran since then either. I can't. If I yeah, run, my, my uh... knee is like, nope. I remember the doctor saying, like, it's not bad enough to need surgery, but it's also never going to heal. And I'm like, great. Wow. Damn. 
I mean, so yeah, what? I mean, I... walking now? I he's just, more like I'll, he slides. He slides for life. <laughs> Yo, hold up. He I can slides good days and bad days. Warners, I can picture you being one of them dudes that power walk with like the feminists. We are women. We are free. We are women. We are free. We are women. We are free. And Warners just in the back like, they are women. They are free. They are women. They are free. <laughs> How? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Four more nurses in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Like, why is he? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I can't run. I can walk. When I, when I, when I do run now, it's with a knee brace and it's not, I have good days and bad that's, days. Sometimes, that's not sometimes I can help, run is it. It helps a little bit. Like, it helps keep it tight. Uh, can you tell when it's going to rain? No. <laughs> You're laughing at your pain, dog. I'm sorry. It's funny. I got hit by a car. They drove away. They drove away. I took myself to the hospital. I got a brain injury and a concussion. And a torn ACL. And a fucked up leg. And a, yeah, fucked up leg. And, uh... Gosh, yeah. we're terrible uh, friends. I can't even tell my work about it. If I told my work about it, they wouldn't let no, me come to work. No, Look, a good friend would pick you up when you're down. Oh. A best friend would try to pick you up after he's done laughing at you. There's like a plaque we had. It's like a good friend bails you out of prison, but a best friend is sitting right next right to there. you laughing about the shit that landed you there. <laughs> I really, really wish there was a video camera because I really want that footage just for comical reasons. Oh my just God. To, if I put that on YouTube, I'd probably take off. I'd be known as the guy that got hit by a car and, and did this and I realized when I, dude, when I kind of realized and he drove off, dude, you'd see this. Somebody with a cell phone saw it and, and filmed <laughs> no it. Lie. There was no one no around. Lie. It was the middle no of the day. That's what you think. I want, I want a Walmart semi truck to kind of T-bone me a little bit. Because Tracy Morgan had that happen to him. Motherfucker's richer than ever. That Walmart money really Jeez. came in handy. <sighs> I, I wouldn't be upset if somebody... No, no, no. Well, look. I wouldn't be upset if a Walmart truck or an Amazon van team boned me to the side. Cause then I'd be like, you getting paid off you motherfuckers. So I um, actually got I actually got lucky when I accidentally hit the lady with the mail truck. It was something like right out the movies because she was actually really hot. <laughs> but but it was really bad because the your mail. Martin was kinda like you have a large package waiting for you. <laughs> you didn't show her the shaft, did you? You didn't have gray no. sweatpants on, did you? I did, I I was I you know I had to be in <laughs> You have the mailman shorts work. that really outline it. <laughs> Are you still wearing jeans right now? No, I'm actually in my sweatpants. You know, I, I worked out earlier, so I, I need to be comfortable. I need to be comfortable. The blood's pumping, huh? <laughs> ha. Ha. Be hey, you should thank me. I didn't post the picture in the gallery this time since you fussed at me. I, I, thought the, it, the... I thought it was funny. <laughs> he was like, "This isn't your only fans. What the fuck are you doing?" Uh, so, okay, so Netflix. I, I like, needs to I like how getting hit that was by just thinking that <laughs> Netflix leads to getting hit by a car. <laughs> getting hit you by were talking about trucks. something else that led. I forgot. Oh my god. Well, Netflix led to the mistreatment of veterans, which leads to getting hit by a car, proving the mistreatment of veterans. <laughs> I don't think you knew. Uh, I don't think you cared. We're, we're in agreement. HBO Max is a go-to. Fuck Netflix. Fuck Hulu. I'm, I'm down with HBO. HBO Max. HBO, yeah. I do have a, a, a final question before we wrap up the show. Funimation was bought by Sony, right? If I remember this correctly, Sony wasn't a bought, well, Didn't they also buy Crunchyroll? Oh, yeah, I thought it and was. They, no, it was Crunchyroll. It was Crunchyroll. So they bought Crunchyroll, and is Funimation still their own individual thing? Because I just want them to be under one damn banner. I just want the. There's no like reason for anime do. to be separated. Because you get Funimation. Yeah. I think they're start, they're talking about getting Funimation with your PlayStation Plus. Would yeah. it be Crunchy fa Funimation? No, I mean Funimation would just put their shows on Crunchyroll. Would still be Crunchyroll. They already have Funimation shows on Crunchyroll just like a handful but instead of them having their own separate service of another service of anime just put it all under one banner anime is that one genre that can be under one banner but but these companies these these animation companies 
and and the writers of the mangas are getting salaries from each one. You put it under one, they get salaries from one. Yeah, but I mean, they would just up, they would merch? just raise the price. They would just they raise the price books? on membership. Yeah. The, let me look. Okay, Warner, hey, hey, look, look at me with a straight pain. face and tell me that the anime fandom would not pay 20 hell probably even 30 bucks a month if all their anime was under one banner and they could read and they could watch all the anime they ever wanted and all read all the manga they wanted with no license they would pay that i would no pay i would pay that. i would pay I would that cancel no every other subscription after that be like all i all, all i need is anime all you need is anime. All they, that would be fine i am a little tired of like the same episode coming out on one and the other but one and maybe. the other but one's not cut up to the other sometimes. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's out of sync. So, yeah, I think that's one thing. Just put all the anime under one banner. The, the, the anime community on its own would keep it afloat. No problem. I guarantee it. That would not be a problem. Anime community is fucking loyal as hell. Exactly. Exactly. They're loyal as hell. And that's exactly why there will be an Attack on Titan Part 2 or feature film. I thought for some reason he was going to say that's why he got hit by a car. I, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that was the forefront of my mind because he took such a long pause. I thought he was going to say, and that's why I got hit by a car. <laughs> the guy knew what? I was an anime fan and said, you know what? I'm going to hit this motherfucker. See how loyal he is after this. And he's still loyal. More, <laughs> more, more, more uh, loyal. I, I can't even run. More as much a as I used to. royal. <laughs> rubble, rubble, rubble. There's rubble, that. There's rubble, that rubble, brain rubble. damage. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the word for spoon, man. A few days ago, like, I was trying to tell. Like, hey, I want to. You have a. Uh, 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 it's like a fork. <laughs> but it's, oh it's like God. a fork without the hole. Spork. Oh, you wanted a spork. And I was like, oh, spoon, spoon. That's, and they were Yo. just like, they didn't know. They didn't know this. Like, but I, I haven't told that many people. And they were just like, what the fuck's wrong with this guy? <laughs> this is just dumb. Yeah, we don't like to talk about it, though. Oh, man. And you know what? That's a good way to end the episode. This was a good episode. Definitely a good way to bring back a week after a No, we didn't take mention Kara's not here this week. I, I did briefly earlier. I was like, Kara's not here to run intervention. When uh, I forget what Yuli was doing. Yuli was doing a Yuli thing. I was like, and Kara's not here to run intervention. <laughs> exactly. I, I, what do I do? I do so much shit that I don't even remember what I do. We don't even remember. We just wait for the next thing to pop up. But, I uh, but yeah, if in case anyone's worried, no, Kara is fine. She is just doing motherly motherly duties. Uh, so hopefully she'll be joining us next week. <laughs> She's running her house <laughs> like it's a prison now. She's running. Her- <laughs> wow! I didn't realize she's running her house like a prison now. God damn it! Yep, yep. She's uh, she's she had to put the foot down. Yeah, she had to put the foot down. Man. But uh, the whole family's but, uh, in trouble. The whole family's in trouble. Yeah. Family. Yeah, Grandma, you know, grandpa, yeah. cousins, everyone. Yeah, uncle, kid, you, husband. Can, I do want to say this. Kara's wrath. And you, Julie, really feel free. I feel like Warner's and Kara, in terms of parenting, you have got to do something really, really, really bad to get them upset. Because if they go and yeah. they're like, uh uh-uh, uh, I got to turn this place, you done fucked up. You done <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> I, I gotta say it because like we're, we're not gonna give out too much details, but the kid lost his TV. He I tell up. my kids, well, you know, I've always up. just been straightforward and, and transparent with my kids. Like, you know, I tell them how it is. I don't care about their age. I tell them how it is and what happens if you continue to do this down the road. How it affects other people. And nine times out of ten, it works. Every now and then, you gotta. And yeah, one time out of ten, you gotta walk your kid out to the avocado tree and be like, "Pick a stick." Oh, I know, I know about that. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 you bet your you know about that. That's another rabbit hole, man. That's another rabbit hole. All I'm gonna say is, if you're a parent out there and you're ever debating about taking your kids' TV away, I didn't get a TV till I got a job, so don't feel bad about it. That's all I'm gonna say on that one. <laughs> I didn't get the cable till I was in high school. 
TV I had was the one in the living room, and I had a time limit. <laughs> <laughs> you got maybe three I, hours. Maybe I three hours? You lucky like some bitch. I got I, one oh, episode. My... Ooh, ooh. Was that like per day? Because the only day. time I could really binge was on Saturday. Yeah, I didn't get I didn't get TV during the week. No. Yeah. I just All my TV time was on a Saturday. One TV. And then, was and then they just, just gave up after a while a big box TV and I'd be trying to watch a show and the, you had to mess with the stupid antenna. Or oh, yeah. Oh, stuff. yeah. But now Back I when the TV's made all that sound. Now now I stream something for Ultra HD for twenty nine ninety nine. Yo, you're Did anyone else have to like box uh, TV and having like the little electric <laughs> vibes come out of the screen? Yeah. My mom would know that the TV was on 10 rooms away because it let out that little hum. I would try to sneak watch the TV and I go, I pull the knob and it would and she'd be like, turn that TV off. And I'm like, how the hell does she know? <laughs> She's five rooms away. Yeah, That's going to be on my next soundtrack. No I, for those who don't know, I'm making two, uh, well, I'm making a soundtrack called Sounds of the Hospital. And it'll just be random sound <laughs> and every now and then you just hear a patient, nurse! Or another one screaming, I want my narcotics! <laughs> or, you know, just random shit that you'd hear in a hospital. And I think my second soundtrack is going to be called Sounds of Parent. I need this. I just want to, I just want to relive my childhood vicariously through your soundtrack. Pick like, a stick! <laughs> <laughs> Dinner's ready! <laughs> oh, man. Well, we are at the end of the episode. Actually, a nice long, long episode. Pretty, pretty good. Make up for episode. not having one for you guys last week. Uh, yeah, so, guys, guys <laughs> if you want to help support the show, make sure you go check out our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash GZ Chop Shop. Also, make sure to check out our website, the GZ Chop Shop dot com with articles written by yours truly. And I actually want to uh, probably have a Justice League review um, oh, up there. So we'll definitely have a Justice League review uh, from from us for you guys to check out. If you haven't if you haven't checked it out for yourself or you want to, you know, get a different view on it, that'll definitely be up uh, for you guys later this week after after its premiere. Way, so HBO make sure Max, you guys go check out it out. And you're listening to this. Hey, we can use some support, man. We'll throw in ads for you. Give us free subscriptions. Oh, God, give, us, give us early access. Warners, the, the point, the point is there. Warners, the the point. I have a joke. I have a joke. I'm done. I have a joke. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Okay, I'm done. Hey, we're done. Recording over. We're recording over. No, we're, done. we're good. We're done. You we're guys done. stay we're safe good. out there. We will catch all you wonderful people in the next episode. Later. The fuck it.